you very much. I'm really happy to be here. Exercise is medicine, and high-intensity interval training is perhaps the most potent uh, exercise therapy, as it has very good effects even in low concentrations. And I will talk about why we should do high-intensity training, how to do it, what we can expect uh, uh, in terms of benefits of doing it, and last but not least, how can we get people to do it. And I won't say uh, anything about the safety, but it is quite safe and at least safer than sitting on the couch. And I don't think we have a, a uniform definition of what high-intensity training is. Um, but it is defined as um, high intensity and in intervals, not very surprising. And by high intensity, we mean, or at least they mean, that you should go, oops, sorry, above 85% of your peak heart rate or above 80% of your peak workload or work rate. So why should we do it? Is it because we don't want to die? If you look at associations between physical activity and reduction in all-cause mortality risk, we see a clear dose response. And this is the total, uh, excuse me, too near, uh, the total amount of physical activity per day in minutes. And if we add or divide into moderate or vigorous activities, we clearly see that doing vigorous activity is quite more um, beneficial. So can high-intensity training make you live longer? We have no, at least that I am aware of, randomized controlled trials showing that any exercise program can make you live longer. And all we know about the effects of physical activity and exercise on mortality is from observational studies. And the problems with these studies is that you have, you have, oh, this is, can I use this one? Is it on? Do I have to? Okay, yeah? Yes. <laughs> um, you, can, you compare, excuse me, you compare one group of subjects with another group of subjects because they differ in something, for example, exercise or smoking. The problem is that they differ in a lot of other things as well. And we cannot adjust for these confounders uh, completely. But we are, or some of my colleagues are doing a randomized control trial now uh, called the Generation 100 study where 1,500 Older participants have been randomized to either high intensity training or moderate intensity training or a control group. And we will get the five year mortality data in hopefully next year. And some of the studies that have been done show a quite clear association between high intensity training and reductions in mortality. And in this study, from our group, uh, they found up to 50% reduced mortality, CBD, uh, cardiovascular disease mortality, associated with only one uh, session of high intensity training per week. And we also saw this in uh, subjects who already had coronary heart disease. Uh, and these numbers are across every frequency and duration of weekly exercise. So we see that even low intensity is protective, but higher intensity is, is better. So I do think we can get older by doing this, but the question is, is it worth it? Because we have to remember that the, the extra years added to life span will come at the end. And I think it's, it's estimated to be only four years extra that you will live if you exercise. And if you then subtract the years that you or the time that you actually have to do it, it's not that much. But you will have lots of other health benefits by doing 
high intensity interval training. You will get a strong heart, you will get lower blood pressure, better uh, glycemic control, higher oxygen uptake or fitness, and I think you will get happier. As so why is it important to have a high oxygen uptake or a to max? It's been uh, known for quite a long time that the fittest of us will live longer. And in this quite recent study uh, from the Mood to the Life Health uh, study in Norway, they saw that uh, uh, very easily measured, estimated fitness level actually predicts cardiovascular mortality uh, quite good. Better than the traditional risk factors, oops, like uh, cholesterol and high blood pressure or smoking. And adding these traditional risk factors to this model didn't give any better estimation. So in this population of more than 30,000 subjects, they found that an increased VO2 max by 3.5 milliliter per kilo per minute was associated with 15 to 18 percent improved survival. And also in this study from Stephen Blair, we saw they did a, a fitness test and then waited five years and did a new one. And the subjects were, oops, were only categorized into fit or unfit. And compared to being unfit over time, they saw that the people who were fit over time had almost 70% reduced mortality risk. So how can we improve the VO2 max? I think that high-intensity training is the best way to do it. And these are just many studies from our group looking at the effect of high-intensity training on VO2 max. And you see that the improvement is, it differs a little bit, but you still you have an improvement in VO2 max by the very same training program, all the way from chronic heart failure patients um, up to healthy subjects. And in all of these studies, uh, we compared high intensity training with moderate intensity training doing the same amount of exercise. And it was two to three times as good. Also, you can get a better control of your uh, blood glucose levels if you do high intensity training. This study is from Denmark. It's, from, it's uh, on uh, subjects with type 2 diabetes. And they also did the same amount of exercise, these two exercise groups. And they had one group walking continuously for 60 min minutes, while the other group walked slow for uh, 3 minutes and then fast for 3 minutes. And they had, and only only the, the interval walkers, and this was free living walking, they were just walking outside, only the interval walkers had an increase in VO2 max by 16%, and also they had much better control of their blood glucose. Both the, the average glucose levels and also they had lower um, like spikes in glucose levels after meals. Blood pressure. This study is from our group. It's uh, patients with, uh, with high blood pressure. Uh, and they were also randomized to interval training or, or moderate training. Here it's called aerobic interval training and moderate intensive training, I guess. Um, and we see a clear effect of both training uh, forms, but a higher uh, decrease in blood pressure with high intensity training. And this uh, decrease is actually uh, equal to what you get if you give one uh, anti-hypertensive drug to these patients. 
and then the heart. Um, what happens to the heart when you exercise? You will get larger um, uh, cells in the heart, they increase in size, and the whole heart increases in size. Um, your cardiac output will be higher, and your heart will get better at contracting. And this is also dose dependent. So these are some of the studies where uh, they have looked at cardiac function in response to moderate intensity training or high intensity training. And they see again a, a larger effect of high intensity training. And in some of these studies, they saw no effect of moderate intensity training on the heart. And even for fertility, we are currently doing a study on women with polycystic ovary syndrome, which is an endocrine disorder um, that um, is actually prevalent in up to 20% of young women. Uh, it's associated with metabolic syndrome, so they have some of the uh, same uh, symptoms as metabolic syndrome uh, subjects. We have, we will hopefully, this is Ida, my PhD student, uh, we will hopefully include 100 women into this study. They are randomized to high intensity, to high intensity training or not. And we have included, I think, 31, uh, 15 of the exercise group women are finished with their 16 weeks of high intensity training. We haven't analyzed the data yet, but we have four pregnancies in this group, and none in the control group. So I'm uh, very excited about what will happen in this study because it's, it hasn't been done before in, in, uh, in regards to fertility. So how should we do it? There are several different ways of doing high-intensity training. Um, and I don't know the answer, what is the best way. Um, we have this very short um, Wingate-like uh, all-out session where you can go really short, but hard. Um, some of you probably know Tabata training. Um, we have this interval walking, which is a very uh, what do you say? Easy implemented training model. We have the model that we have used in, in Norway, which is a four times four minutes model, where you, after warming up for about 10 minutes, you go four minutes at 90 to 95% of your heart rate maximum. In some studies, we have used 85 to 95%. You do it four times with breaks of two to three minutes in between. And then you have the 10 times one minute model where you go even harder in the, in the intervals, like up to perhaps 100% of your peak power output, but it's only for one minute, and you have one minute rest in between. And I don't know which is the best, I think it depends a little bit on your goal, what do you want with your training? So in this study, they compared the four times four minute model, the 10 times one, and continuous moderate intensity. And the, the amount of exercise was equal at baseline, so that the calories burn were the same. This was in sedentary people, previously sedentary. Uh, with uh, to be included in the study, they had to be overweight or obese. They did it only for three weeks. Uh, no, sorry, six weeks. Three, three, two. Hurry up, five minutes. Yep, three times per week. And in this study, they saw uh, an increase after in VO2 max after the four times four minute uh, interval program 
also after 10 times 1, but not a very large one. Also, they found the uh, improved time to exhaustion in all, uh, after all three uh, training programs. What people wonder is not what's the optimal program, it's how little can you get away with. What's the minimum? And in this study, they compared our, or not our, but the traditional Fortax formal with only one interval, so one times per minute. And uh, these were also previously sedentary men, and they saw an increase of the both training programs, and not a very, it's not a significant difference between the two. So perhaps you can get away with one interval. Uh, but I think um, it's all about the intensity. So in this study, we compared um, the actual heart rate that the subjects were training at. In, in, we just collapsed data from four, four studies on, uh, on, in um, coronary heart disease patients. So we had 112 subjects. And we saw that those who were able to do their high intensity at a really high intensity, they had a larger increase in their year to max. And we also saw, we also assessed if the number of exercise sessions or the age or the initial year to level was, um, if, the in, uh, if the increase was dependent on those variables, which is what it was not. So, last point, how do we get people to do it? We have several uh, reasons for not exercising, and I don't, even though people say that they don't have time, I don't think that's the main reason. I think they are not motivated. Mm. Uh, it's not a, we know so much about exercise, it's not a question about education, but of motivation. But people are motivated to play video games. And almost every Norwegian kid does it, and I guess it's the same in Australia. But actually, the most active players are 30 years old. <laughs> and to try to collapse the best of two worlds into one, um, I worked a little bit with some uh, computer scientists, and you, you've probably heard of Exo Games and Pokemon Go at least. And if you look at Exo Games that exist, they are on this graph. You see the game quality. These are apparently two very good games. I don't know them. And if you look at oops, exercise on this graph, if we think that high-intensity exercise is the very best thing you can do. Most of the, the games, the X games that exist, they are either very good games, like Pokemon Go, it's a, it's a good game, but the intensity when you play it is quite low. You just stroll around. Or they are really good intensity, but it's not a good game. So, these two guys, they have invented a new one, a new exa game. And we have only just started to try it in subjects, so we have done it in eight young men who are gamers, familiar with gaming. And they were asked to walk for, uh, no, sorry, to, to play this exa game for 15 minutes and then continue as long as they wanted. And then they had a short break, and then they were asked to walk outside in pairs and continue as long as they wanted. And we saw that they actually walked in average 17 minutes, so two minutes more than they had to. And they played this extra game for 44 minutes. And also we saw that their, their uh, rate of perceived exertion was pretty high during the extra game and also their enjoyment. And when we looked at the heart rate during the exa game, we actually saw this nice interval curve, just like a four times four minute 
except it's fine, uh, on the treadmill. So we were quite happy. And I, I want to end with showing you a video of the, the X game.